knowing what your intention behind the outcome you want to receive from that ask, that offer, is the most crucial point. Hello, welcome to episode 197 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we are joined by founder and CEO of J Flowers Marketing, Jocelyn Flowers. Sharing her insights on digital marketing and creating intentional impact, Jocelyn emphasizes the importance of consistency in digital marketing and the need to build trust and rapport with the audience. With an ever-expanding list of digital platforms to show up on, Jocelyn shares her best practices when selecting which platform to focus on for long-term success. But before we get on to the day's featured interview, the Smart Agents Magazine is available and full of insights and strategies designed to help real estate agents grow their businesses. Inside, you'll find interviews and advice from leading real estate professionals, marketing tips to flood your business with leads, and even swipe and deploy files full of practical tools to enhance your business. Be sure to click the link in the episode description to claim a free digital issue. Also, if you enjoy this conversation, be sure to like and subscribe. The Smart Agents podcast streams on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and of course, YouTube. And finally, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. All right, let's get on to the day's featured interview with Jocelyn Flowers. If you're interested in learning more, be sure to check out her website, jflowersmarketing.com. Well, really the way I like to start everything out is if you could introduce yourself to us a little bit, who you are and a bit of your marketing background, I guess, really. Yes, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. I am Jocelyn Flowers, CEO and founder of J Flowers Marketing. We are a digital marketing agency that supports entrepreneurs, small business owners really looking to expand their brand and have intentional impact. Right. Awesome. So, you know, before we dive into, um, you know, your tips and your advice for, uh, for our audience, tell me a little bit about your background. How did you get into digital marketing? Yes. Um, so I actually started my business about eight years ago, actually this month, uh, it'll be eight <laughs> years on Sunday, which is exciting. Um, yeah. and that I wanted to have a creative outlet that allowed me still to support others and kind of figuring out how would that work. And so Within the last eight years, I've really designed and kind of had many renditions of my business in the marketing side of things. Um, and so that's really what kind of spiked my interest for it is how can I get out there? What ways can I be creative and also being authentic and true to who I am as the individual that is the face of my brand? Right. Excellent. So tell me, you know, as you were starting your business and over the, the time that you have, um, you know, been doing this and working with clients, um, what are some of the biggest challenges that you see, you know, biggest challenges or even biggest mistakes, you know, small, you know, entrepreneurs and business people are making with their digital marketing? Yes, I would say that I'm, I, I don't like to call them mistakes, but I would say a gap to close that I'm seeing a lot is that there's lack of consistency. And so when we aren't consistent on platforms, whether it's multiple social media platforms, whether it's email marketing, website, anything that is in the digital space, we start to lose kind of that credibility a little bit. So our viewers and our audience aren't really sure what we're offering, how we're offering it, when we don't have that consistency. They don't really get to build that relationship and that trust and that rapport with you, even if it's just watching your videos or commenting on posts that you have. They're still building a relationship with you. And so when we're not consistent, we lose that. Mm -hmm. So it makes it really hard to you know, convert that audience into sales or a potential client. Right. I'm always interested, you know, uh, uh, when people like yourself or, you know, some of the other, um, you know, business owners that I've talked to that, you know, have a, like you said, the gap to close and you found that gap to close. And a lot of times that comes from, you know, own personal experiences. Yes. Is that something that you found, you know, that you were, you know, uh, maybe when launching your business that you had to work on those things? Yes, absolutely. My so I will say that 
first couple years that I was in business, I was so young, so to speak, to the industry of starting as an entrepreneur. I started my company at 21 years old. Um, so I was going into rooms with people who have already been in business 30, 40 years and having to say, what do I have to offer this room that these individuals haven't already offered? And so one of the things was having to really get clear on how am I presenting myself into rooms? What do I have to offer? What is unique about me? Because the information really isn't new. There's no new information out there. There's just new ways to approach or use that information in a way that's effective for your brand because it's going to be different for everybody. No, there's no one strategy or one type of content that's going to be successful for everybody. Um, so really figuring out what was that that clicked for me, that really resonated for me and knowing that if it resonated with me, it was going to attract the people that wanted to connect with me and that really wanted to build that relationship and have those conversations because they saw something in me that they also saw in themselves. So that's really where I kind of just dove headfirst into that in the beginning and just continued to build on that every year of my business. Right. And I think that's, you know, uh, it's perfect for our audiences, you know, real estate agents. Um, yes. The service they are providing is you know, there's all the information out there. There's really um, not a ton of, you know, differentiating factors besides your person, like you as the person yes. doing it. And so having to market that is, is sometime, you know, that that's the biggest thing is what's separating me from, you know, the agent that just came in and met you 20 minutes ago. Absolutely. Well, what I love about the real estate industry in general is, you're not just showing a space, you're creating and showing a story and painting a picture for those potential buyers to see, do I see myself in this space? Can I create a life or business in this space? And with that, you have to be very intentional in what you're showing, how you're talking about it, the energy and essence you're bringing forward in showing that space because I can look at spaces all day and have no connection to them and it's not going to draw me in to want to see more of that space or learn more about it and go, I need to be in there. When there's a story and I'm able to have a emotional connection with it, that's what's going to take me that step farther and go, okay, is this the space for me or is this the person I really want to connect with? Because I know they're going to take all of my dreams, my wants, my needs into consideration and be intentional with the spaces that they're showing me. And right. so that's what really will differentiate you between other people in your industry. Uh, because there's only so many ways you can explain a space um, or the, you know all of the features and benefits of a space. But it's creating really that picture of what are the opportunities that can be created in that. Right. And I think that's what's really interesting about real estate also is you have like the two, you know, different marketing that you're doing. You're marketing, you know, the the spaces that you're you're selling for your clients, but then you're yes. also marketing yourself as, mm -hmm. you know, for lead generation to bring in more clients. Absolutely. And, you know, having to do both of those at the same time. Yes. Well, and I feel in the real estate industry, you have a very unique platform of you really are kind of the focal point outside of the space because the way you're presenting yourself is what people are going to resonate with. So if I'm super bubbly and I'm really exciting, for some people, that's going to be too much. They want to go with someone who may be a little bit more serene, more calm, but you may have that individual that says, I just need to be around them. I don't care what they're showing me. I need to be around that person because their energy is infectious. And I know that they're going to give me an experience, if anything. Um, but then again, you have that other side where if you are a little bit more subdued, maybe you're a little more soft-spoken in the way you present it, 
you're going to have people that resonate with that as well. So being able to kind of find how is that path looking for you? How do you want to show up? And then being intentional with it and never kind of putting on a facade because you never want to create that disconnect in your messaging from what they're seeing online to what they're seeing in person with you. Yeah. yeah and, and you, you've kind of mentioned the words a few times is uh, being intentional with your marketing. Yes. So I really kind of want to dive into that whole concept. And, and first off, you know, really just, can you kind of give us a breakdown of what that means? What does it mean to create, you know, that intentional impact with your marketing? Yes, absolutely. So anybody who is providing a service and offering those services or speaking about those services on a digital platform or even in person, you have an intention behind what you're asking. No matter what you're posting, there's always going to be some sort of an ask or a pitch or an offer that you're presenting. And knowing what your intention behind the outcome you want to receive from that ask, that offer, is the most crucial point. So a, a great example is, for instance, if you're just trying to build the awareness of your brand in your community. You want to be intentional in how you're asking your community and those viewers to connect with you. I want you to be a part of my community so we can connect and I can really get to know what are the things you want? What are the things that you find are missing? Things like that versus just saying, follow me, I'm pretty cool. Follow me, I have great listings. There's no intention behind that. And that really does create that block um, mm -hmm. for the audience that you're trying to connect with. So knowing what your intention behind is, I want to create a deeper connection with the people of my community so that they trust me as an advisor when they're looking for property or spaces that connect with them and that they know, is it something short term, that it could be something they want to have for generations. So I'm going to look for a person that is intentional, impactful, and also, you know, confident in what they're bringing forward. So that's a, a great piece. And you're going to show that in your content. So with the images that you're sharing, you know, you're portraying that story, even through your imagery of, I want this space to be that place where you could start your family. Or, you know, you can pass down for generation. You're creating all of those storylines along the way. And there's an intention behind that. Or, you know, when you're asking for the sale, you're being intentional of all of the things that they're benefiting and the value they're getting from providing and, you know, handing over that sale. Because a lot of these things are major investment and major life changes. And you have to give them you know, a reason to do that. And so your intentionality around these topics is what's going to help them kind of say, okay, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to take that next step. When you are uh, working with a client or for one of the, you know, the agents or somebody that's listening uh, to this, what are some of the things that they can do to kind of um, build out that, that messaging or, you know, what they want to uh, how they want to be portrayed or yes. what that, you know, message that they want to get to those clients, because I think that's so much, you know, so much of that work on the, f before you even start putting out your marketing campaigns or all that stuff, like you really need to know what it is, yeah, you know, that end goal is. Absolutely. Um, so whenever I'm talking with clients and, you know, creating their strategy, creating the plan of what are we wanting to put out there? I, I go through specific questions and I ask them, if you were in the position of your audience member or your viewer, what would you need to hear to say, okay, this is the person I need to listen to, or this is the person I need to have that conversation with. And also the biggest thing when it comes to content and kind of the visual aspect of it is less is more. And a lot of clients always want to have every little bullet point. They want to make sure they're getting everything out there. So 
that their audience knows they are the expert. They are the authority in what they're talking about. But a lot of the time, the more simpler posts or, you know, the one or two key points are actually going to have more of an impact than if you're trying to have every feature listed or you're trying to go through everything top to bottom when you're talking about a space or what you offer, it's going to actually create more overwhelm and more anxiety and all of these mixed emotions than creating clarity. So those are what I would, my two points that I would say I recommend the most of when you're really starting out and kind of planning, whether you've been in business for two days or you've been in business for 30 years, you're going to have that same approach it, because you're going to have different iterations of how you're presenting content as you go along. You're going to find out what works, what doesn't work. What do people really resonate and engage with more versus what are they not engaging with as much? And then taking a look at the time it's taking you to create that content and really pull everything together because as an entrepreneur, you know, we wear multiple hats. There's a, we're, we're doing everything from sales to marketing to con communications. So figuring out that system and structure that really works for you to do your marketing effectively and consistently. Again, that consistency is the biggest part when you're coming to your marketing. Right. Absolutely. And I think, you know, but what you said there is you, you don't don't feel like you have to put so much into each individual post or whatever you know blog whatever it is that you're putting out there because um i just i know for me if i try to put too much i get so overwhelmed and then i i don't get one post out let alone you know the three or four that i had planned yes. i get so like bogged down and it's like and if i took that you know my 10 steps for whatever i could have made five other posts and Yes. At least I get, you know, I have more stuff coming out and I'm consistent with it because that's a big thing also. It's just that consistency. If you start something up yeah. and then you fall off the face of the earth for a month, <laughs> you've lost all that, you know, yeah. everything that you've built up. Absolutely. And kind of speaking on what you just talked about is, you know, if you do take a step back, you don't want your presence or your impact to suffer from that. Um, and a great example of this is the last year I went through some major health issues that really made me have to take a step back. And thankfully, I had gotten to the point where I have a team to support me. So it wasn't kind of completely all stopping. But we were able to create a strategy and a plan that allowed us to really kind of bulk create and sit down. Mm -hmm. It took an hour or two hours out of my week where I sat down, not feeling great, but we, we went through, okay, what are the creative ideas that we have? What are the things that we really want to make sure we're getting into? Because we don't know how long this process is going to be. And I ended up being out of the day-to-day -day for about six months, mm -hmm. focusing on my health. And none of my audience knew that I was gone because we were able to kind of plan ahead and be intentional with what do we want to have out there? We have our kind of focus point. I always want to be a resource for those who are coming to my platform, no matter what type of industry they're in, I want them to be able to get some kind of takeaway for being on my platform, whether they work with my agency or not. So that was the main intention. And so what do we need to do? And we were able to kind of plan that out. So, when I came back and I kind of made the official announcement, I'm back, I'm ready, <laughs> let's connect. Everybody was like, wait, I thought you were here still. Like I had no idea where we're gone. And so it, I just got to really see what that impact had that nobody saw that falter. Nobody saw it, there was actually a slowdown mm -hmm. because they still had consistent content that was going out and being intentional with what was going out. Right. Well, I, I really like what you said there a moment ago about, you know, that main focus uh, was to provide value to your audience, whether or not, whether they work for, 
you know, came to work with your agency or not. And yeah. I think that's, um, you know, so important for our real estate audience also is because like, that's the whole thing, you know, people, if I'm looking up, if I move into a new market and I'm looking up local agents, I'm probably going to be surfing, you know, Instagram or wherever it is. And yeah. I'm going to be, I'm not necessarily going to be looking for that person that's, um, you know, just posting every one of their just listed or, you know, every time they've sold a place, I, I'm looking for that value of what, what's my life going to look like moving into that town and, yeah. and that type of content you can batch and you can create once a month and roll it out. Absolutely. Well, and another very easy piece of content is testimonials. Every time you work with a client, get feedback from them. What was their experience like? And having different mediums as well, so written or video or audio, <clears throat> excuse me, um, is a great way to kind of mix up the content so it doesn't feel stagnant in a way. But that's easy content that you can keep batching and kind of repurposing throughout. And one of the things I always tell my clients is don't feel like you have to reinvent the wheel. There's going to be content that we posted a year, two years ago that could still be relevant now, but maybe we're approaching it a little bit different. But you don't have to re-record the video. You don't have to rewrite, you know, the piece of content. We're just going to reframe it in a different way. And people are still going to resonate with that. And so don't make a mountain out of a molehill is the, the easiest term that I can really kind of share with my clients when they're looking at creating content. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I really like that one too. You know, what you created a year ago, not only might it, you know, still be totally relevant today, but just think about all those other people that have joined your audience that yeah. weren't around the last time you posted it to and maybe haven't seen it. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. What, um, when it comes to, uh, you know, being on multiple platforms. So there's so much now, and I know there, mm -hmm. that can get really overwhelming. You know, it's like, do I have to do the Instagram, the Facebook, and also focus on YouTube, but also run my website. So I'm getting the, the SEO from that. What's your advice for, um, you know, even agents, because a lot of them, they are, they're working by themselves. They don't have the, the support team Absolutely. behind them. Um, what's your advice for um, where and how they need to show up? Absolutely. So what I would always say, because I get this question a lot of, okay, how many platforms do I need to be on? What one's going to get me the most leads? What, you know, what's going to have the conversion? Ultimately, pick one or two platforms that you're super comfortable with. I always recommend if you've used it kind of in a personal manner, figure out what business features they have um, and then just dive in because if you know the platform already and are comfortable from using it in your personal experience, there's not much of a change using it for business other than maybe the way you're presenting the content, um, which in that sense is how you're showing up. So you're going to have that difference there. So pick one to two platforms you're super comfortable with and just start showing up. And it doesn't have to be perfectly polished. It doesn't have to be perfectly planned out. Just be committed and consistent with it. Second, know where you're pointing them to. So for social media is free. Um, so a lot of my clients will start out with social media. They won't have a website. They're not going to have an email list. Start out with one. You can build to the others later on. But always make sure that when you're working with one or two platforms and you're getting consistent, make sure you're setting it up to grow with you. So that will be the one thing I do say, if you're picking a platform and you're not really sure how it's going to work for your business, make sure it has enough features that will grow with you. So it, it's giving you option of video and photo and written word. You can add links just for some examples. Because then when you are ready to, let's say, have a website that you can point people to and build, because social media, you never control your audience in a sense of you're never always going to have access to them. Some platforms, and we're seeing this with TikTok nowadays, is that it could disappear tomorrow. 
And you may have built a community there that you don't really have permanent access to. So eventually you are going to want to find a way to connect with people offline or to another platform that you do have a little bit more control of. So figure out what those steps look like for you and then just make that decision when you're ready. So having a place to point them to like a website where you can have a database in the back end that stores anybody who travels there or even having an email list that stores the contact information so you can always go back to them later even if that platform on social media happens to go down or you lose the following there. So just be mindful of that as well and being intentional that social media shouldn't be the one stop that you're driving them to, but have multiple platforms eventually down the line that you can drive them to, um, to have a little bit more control of your connection with them. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's really important because, I mean... You just see it with, I mean, just think, I think we do a lot of stuff on YouTube and the way that's yeah. changed over the past several months and really year, I guess, with even their shorts, not having the clickable links and things yes. like that. Like that's made things, you know, everybody was driving people to their website or their landing page and YouTube was like, wait a second, that's not our intended goal. We want to keep people on this as long as possible. Absolutely. And so, you know, we've all had to adapt with that. And so having that place that's off the social media platforms is really important. Absolutely. And, you know, you're going to know when it's the right time to say, okay, I, I've got this established. I'm ready to take that next step. I know when I started my business and, you know, before I got all of the certifications that I have now, I had a pen and paper and would write them down when I would go to networking. I would, I had a whole Rolodex, which a lot of kids nowadays don't know. Um, I had a Rolodex of all my business cards. So I knew how to organize everything and go back to them. Now there are software out there that helps you kind of expedite that process. But you're going to have a way to start out, but make sure you're getting them to a platform eventually that you have a little bit more control over. Right. When you are working with uh, maybe, you know, it's a, a, a new entrepreneur, maybe, you know, somebody like a real estate agent that, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're creating this really intentional content. And I know... We've, a lot of the agents we've talked to uh, for other things, um, sometimes they're afraid to really kind of pigeonhole themselves and yes. have like one singular message when their uh, market or their audience base could have a lot of different uh, needs or desires. But then what they end up finding is if you just create that audience base and really get intentional about what you're good at or what you want to portray, people are going to find you either way and the referrals are going to come in. Absolutely. Well, what I will always say for those who are wondering, who am I talking to? What does my audience look like? I don't want to single any group out is create content that is generalized enough that can be easily digested by more than one audience. But you are going to have a core audience that just instantly clicks with you that you're going to see may show up a little bit more than some other audiences, but just know those audiences are still there. They're going to wait for that moment to where there is that piece of content that may be directed specifically for them that goes, okay, that's it. That's, that's the sign I needed to see. But you're always going to have one audience that just knows you, that just really connects with you instantly. And there, you're going to see that's kind of what shows up more frequently, but there are going, it just may take a little bit longer for those other audiences to say, okay, I'm ready to go. And a great example of this is I would say about 70% of my client base is in the coaching industry. So they are all generally, no matter what type of coaching they're doing, they're really focused in four things. They want to either have a one-on-one -on -one practice, they want to create group program, they want to speak on stages, or they want to write a book. Those are the kind of core four areas. 
And so a lot of my content will gear toward them, but that's not saying someone in the real estate agent can't take the same tips of if you apply these three systems or these three steps, is it still going to get success in their marketing? They're just, again, going to approach it a little bit differently. Um, I've also worked with musicians. I've worked with, you know, cafes. So I've worked with all different industries. We just apply the tips a little bit differently depending on the industry that you're in. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, just um, a great example of that in real estate, you know, if you're down in the Miami area or something like that, you might have, yes. you know, you might see that real estate agent that is like the condo queen. Like that's all mm. you see is like she dominates the condos in there. But that yep. doesn't mean that she doesn't have, you know, waterfront single family home listings. It's just she's made her name and grown yes. up her business through through the condo. Uh, Absolutely. Market. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, before I let you go, we talked a lot about, you know, creating that intentional content. Um, but if, if somebody is interested in, you know, learning about learning more, what are what are some of those other things that they could expect, you know, from you or what you even, you know, what you work with uh, your clients mm -hmm. with? Yeah. So one of the things, again, as I mentioned, any of my platforms, anywhere you would find us is going to be 90 percent educational or resource based. Because one of the things I wish I had access to when I was starting out was how to do things better and how to have different options of doing things where I started my business in New York City and I was a very small fish in a very big pond. Right. And, you know, a lot of people were very tight lipped about kind of sharing their secrets to success. And so... Right. I found that that was a gap that I had to find a way to close it in other avenues. And so, you know, find the ways to continue learning and finding out who you resonate with. Because my, again, the way I approach certain tips may resonate with some, but not resonate with others. So find those people that you really do resonate with and connect with. And even if you don't agree with every tip or resource or way they approach something, 90% of their content is going to be something that you connect with. So just finding those people and have multiple different people in other industries to kind of pull from. So I looked for, at people in the organizing industry. I looked at people who were in entertainment because I was like, how can I get people to connect with me? How do I need to show up? So that people are like, okay, she's the girl I need to go with. And that had to change for me from being kind of that subdued, kind of hide in a corner. Like if someone talks to me, I'll talk to them, but I'm not going to be the one that makes that first step in approaching to now I can walk into any room, have a conversation with anybody and know that I still have something to offer no matter how long I've been in business. Because my experiences have guided different ways that I approach things. Someone else's experiences have guided their approach to things, but there's always going to be some sort of common ground or commonalities that you can connect on and go, oh, I see that. This is how I would go with it or this is how I could go with that. Um, and so just continue learning and yes, do your research. Look what and see what's out there and you're going to find the things that you are attracted to and the things that you're not. And you're going to bring some of those elements into your marketing. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the great thing about, uh, you know, uh, digital marketing and sales and all these different things is uh, you really can, you can learn from everybody. There's not, absolutely. you know, I, I don't just need to listen to my, my real estate marketing, uh, coaches right there. I mean, there's so many different bits and pieces that I can pull from different places to build my own personal, you know, uh, absolutely. digital marketing experience or how I do things. Absolutely. And one of the things too, is if, you just stick to one avenue, you're kind of missing out on a broader audience that would still connect with you, but they're looking over here because they're not necessarily in that niche or that that sector. So always having at least one kind of out of the box area where you can kind of pull that information is going to give you a more unique approach into how you are intentional with showing up on your social platforms. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, for anybody listening to this that wants to uh, follow you and, and, you know, learn, uh, learn from you a little bit more and get some of those resources, where, where can they go? Absolutely. Um, so you can either go to our website, jflowersmarketing.com, or we're on all major social media platforms as Jflowers Marketing. So you'll see us there. Awesome. We will definitely be sure to uh, have all those linked up for people to Wonderful. make it easy to get to them. Well, I do really appreciate you taking the time uh, to talk with us today. Thank you so much for having me, Michael. I really want to thank Jocelyn for joining us today and sharing all of her tips for finding greater success with your digital marketing. Remember, if you're interested in learning more, be sure to check out her website at jflowersmarketing.com. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode. But remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.